Good morning, this is Addison Shonland. It, today is June the 19th, 2020, and my guest is Riona Armersmith, Chief Project Engineer, Hybrid Electric Propulsion at Rolls-Royce. Boy, I feel like I need to take a breath after that, Riona. <laughs> that's yes, some title. Some title. <laughs> it yeah. is. So, thank you very much for, for spending some time with me this morning. What You're I would like welcome. to what I would like to speak with you about is this hybrid environment. So COVID, it's started, everybody's involved with COVID. COVID has impacted everybody. How has that impacted the hybrid journey at Rolls-Royce? Well, obviously COVID has massively impacted the, the whole aerospace industry and significantly impacts Rolls-Royce in terms of our, our civil aerospace business and our, our delivery of engines and flying hours of engines. Um, and uh, and it, it's impacting our entire business overall, um, which is, is, is regrettable, but it's a, it's a situation that everybody faces right, right. now. Um, right. But I think we're seeing that um, in order to come out of this in a strong position um, as a company, but also um, as economies as well, are really looking to, to invest in uh, sustainable uh, futures. So we can't come out of one crisis, which is this COVID crisis, and straight into, uh, uh, or, or not even straight into, but remaining in the environmental crisis that we're, we're currently in. So overall, in terms of how COVID has impacted electrification, uh, ambitions in electrification, I think it, it's galvanized them. Right. It's I mean, not I, slowing I, them down. I mm. noticed with interest the French government's uh, support for the aerospace industry requiring a greener future. That was really interesting. Yeah. There seems to be a number of different roadmaps for a, to a net zero um, carbon future. And you've, you've chosen, Rolls-Royce has chosen the UN Race to Zero campa campaign. Why and how does this differ from the ICAO CO2 roadmap? Mm. So I think that's really reflecting that Rolls-Royce operates not just in, in aerospace, so we operate in a number of different sectors. So aerospace, uh, marine, rail, um, in, in, in nuclear power generation as well. Um, and so really the UN Race to Zero is about committing to reducing um, emissions, carbon emissions from our facilities by 2030, and also committing to enabling the reduction of or, or, or the net zero of emissions within our uh, the industries that we operate in um, and sell our products to into in 20 by 2050 and we've committed to publishing our roadmap about how we intend to do that with interim milestones by the end of this year and how that differs from ICAO is ICAO is obviously only it's only an aerospace standard so that really governs how we reduce our emissions in aerospace not our our business overall Right. I think it's interesting to see that one of the impacts of COVID has been everybody's noticing cleaner sky, cleaner everything. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like it is a, a heavenly sent message to all of us to pay attention. Um, so when we're considering zero carbon growth, there are a number of levers, levers to use to achieve it, such as aircraft, engine technology, operations, infrastructure, biofuels. Now, the largest are engine technologies and biofuels. Could you give us any, de any information or details on these aspects and how Rolls-Royce is working in these areas? Yeah, so we really have, have three pillars that we're working on right now. One is, is um, more efficient gas turbines, right? the core of our business, making those as efficient as we possibly can. Um, the, the second is about... Uh, obviously electrification and new technologies um, within that and then the third one is about sustainable aviation fuels so not necessarily just biofuels I think um, we're looking at a whole array of ways to to really push the industry into making sustainable fuels whatever they may be and then one of the, the the big problems we could foresee is that if you are trying to make fuels from uh, things that take large amounts of farmlands and that is not going to be a solution so we're really looking at, at producing fuels um, that are 
sustainable and aren't going to impact other industries um yeah especially agriculture so um under those three pillars uh take the first one our our gas turbines so we are currently developing our future generation of gas turbines um really that's aimed uh, towards geared turbofans so having very high bypass ratio engines which uh, are incredibly efficient obviously on the uh, technology side um, on the novel technology side we're investigating a whole range of technologies such as um, obviously electric and hybrid electric which is, is my main area of focus but also uh, hydrogen and, uh, and other technologies that are emerging such as that and then really on the sustainable aviation fuel side we are really playing a, a role in terms of pushing the industry to to be able to create more fuel, um, you know, we need a thousand times more sustainable aviation fuel than is currently available in order to to be able to use it. Our engines, we believe, can take it as a drop-in replacement, um, so we're ready. Uh, but the production of those fuels is not happening fast enough. Um, we believe that we can also play a part in in that as well with uh, using our small modular reactors in order to pre uh, provide the electricity to actually create the fuel in the first place. So notwithstanding the Hindenburg um, disaster, <laughs> hydrogen is really a, a, an interesting one, right? Um, if we see hydrogen increasingly toyed with um, in terms of motor cars. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, is, is really interesting is um, you've got a situation where you've got volume and weight and the energy that it's needed to pro be produced by the engine. So like you talk about this dropping thing. So hydrogen is a problem, right? Because it's how much volume you need and the weight to hold that hydrogen. There was something on Twitter yesterday about a bunch of people looking at hydrogen powered airplanes. And, and then of course, I also want to ask you about the technology in battery development. So I don't know if we want to talk about hydrogen. It sounds like it's far away in the future. Maybe for your specific, uh, your world is, let's talk about battery um, power to weight <laughs> and that sort of thing. Yeah, so I can talk, I can talk about both really. I mean, hydrogen, we look at the advantages of hydrogen and it looks great in terms of energy density. It's fantastic. Obviously there are challenges around storage uh, and, and use of that. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we want to go and burn hydrogen in gas turbines. That's one option. And it is an option that is being investigated. There's also hydrogen fuel cells, which you know, provide an alternative to lithium ion cell batteries that we currently have. Um, which, you know, we've seen some developments there that look promising. But again, it's, it's, it's a kind of, a, it's a, I wouldn't say it's watch and wait. We're actively playing a role. Um, but what we have right now is, is lithium ion batteries. And um, yeah, uh, I mean, I've said publicly bef before, and it's quite easy to look on an energy density basis. It doesn't compete with kerosene. That's, that's fair to say. But I think when you, you can't just look at these aircraft in the future and, and, and make that call, you have to look at the overall emissions of an aircraft um, and how uh, how a battery enables you to do things that you can't currently with a with a, uh, a kerosene powered aircraft today. So there are a lot of people that are all, you know, all electric or, or hybrid electric with lithium ion batteries doesn't make sense. Well, no, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, but you have to consider an aircraft very differently to what we consider today. You have to really use the advantages of that uh, electrical system um, which obviously is enabled by by the battery. So yes, we you know we are ever hopeful and actively working on developing the power density of batteries, but also safety. Um, but again, it's 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 not a silver bullet. We right. are ex exploring a range of technologies, and you know I think it's a really interesting and an exciting time for aerospace. It feels like it's a the race is on again, right. uh, that so many options are, are available and so many new aircraft are coming out as well, not just so many different uh, engine varieties. It's, right. uh, it's a really interesting time to be working in aerospace. 
of course, I think I think that everybody kind of assumes or, or expects that the the electrical, the battery, the battery solution is going to be found first in these UAMs, you know, on the Uber side of the business as opposed to an airline side of the business. Yeah, well, I think it's uh, yes, if you're saying all electric, but I think adding batteries into conventional aircraft can actually help I mean, maybe smaller levels of hybridization of the engines that we have today in order right. to, to taxi electrically or to, to boost on takeoff or to, um, uh, to be able to almost turn your engines off completely and burn no fuel on, on descent. So there are, there are advantages, obviously, for very long haul flights um, where your taxi, your takeoff, your landing is such a small proportion of your flight, then yes, batteries look challenging because of the weight that you're carrying around for the entire duration of the flight. Um, and the fact that that weight doesn't reduce um, as you burn it like a fuel does. Mm -hmm. So, yes, but I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to say that battery, we'll only see batteries in um, in an urban air mobility kind of environment, there's lots, lots of, uh, of, of scope for electrification of, of an aircraft, and that's not just necessarily in the propulsion system either. It's interesting what uh, you, you, you reflect a little, uh, and, and you, <laughs> an idea that I, sp I spoke with the people in, in uh, Seattle that powered the eBeaver. I take it you watched that with great interest as well, like the rest of us. Yes. And yes. Um, yes. when Definitely. I spoke with the, that engine company and I said, you know, or well, the motor company, like, how, how are you doing this? And, and they were very pleased to say that the amount of fuel in the tanks on the wings for the Beaver, they were going to be weight neutral. If they put batteries in that space, yes, they wouldn't have the range they would let's say handle 200 miles before they had to charge. I'm, try I'm trying to remember what the exact number was, but what they were able to point out to me was you could go weight neutral and you'd have to give up something. And that thing that you give up is range, mm -hmm. but they could make an airplane work, a conventional, I mean, think about this. The Beaver has gone from radial to turboprop now to electric. I mean, that is yeah. a phenomenal I don't know if people really comprehend how phenomenal that is. Yeah. Yeah, that I agree. Is. And it, it's, it's, it's about, I mean, there were many people that, um, that, that thought Elon Musk was crazy in terms of electric cars and, and Tesla and look how far that's come. I think that in order to create the race with the technology, you have to start somewhere. Um, you know, if you just say it will never work you know, and give up immediately, then... Uh, you will never create the demand and you will never create the competition that then starts the, that really kickstarts the development. And I guess that's really what we're trying to do here. But you know, we, we see possibilities for the technology regardless of, of, of where the development is going. You know, obviously I'm, I'm hoping and actively working on the development of those technologies in order to get them to a place where they are incredibly desirable. Um, but we see benefits even where the technology is today. Okay, so, so let's, let's move to the EFAN X and the XL programs. Can you give us mm -hmm. an update on, on where those are, please? Yeah, so the EFAN X program is, is, is my baby. Um, so I was first person on the project and, and I'll be the last. Um, so yes, it was a collaborative research program with Airbus to um, develop a two megawatt uh, class propulsion system, hybrid electric propulsion system, um, and we were going to fly that on board a, a, a flying test bed, the BA-146 four-engine aircraft. And we um, decided to to end that that flying test program with with Airbus, um, and really that was because we have learned so much through the ground test program that we some things we did expect. And some things that we, we didn't expect at all. Um, you know, when you do these things for the first time, you really find those unknown unknowns. Um, and we really understand where we need to push the technology now in a way that we didn't before. Um, and so we're getting so much value out of ground tests that we, we questioned whether we really needed to go to a flight test, um, especially in the current climate with, 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 with COVID and everything going on as well. So we are... 
uh, in Rolls-Royce, we're continuing to test our technologies that we've we built for the Fanex program, such as our two and a half megawatt electrical systems, so our, our motors, generators, power electronics, our thermal management systems, our control systems, and we'll put that on the engine to really make a, a two and a half megawatt hydroelectric engine uh, by the end of this year, and that's going to be tested in a bespoke test facility in Bristol in the UK towards the end of this year. And then the complete opposite end of the spectrum is the Axel program, which is our attempt to build, beat the electric flight speed record. So it's a single pilot, it's completely all electric, uh, very small, very fast aircraft, uh, where really we're using it to, to develop battery technology and to really um, understand the limits of where we can take relatively off the shelf um, components um, such as the motors that we're taking and they're not completely off the shelf they're modified um, but it's kind of exploring what you can do with automotive technologies in terms of taking them up into into aerospace so totally different ends of the, right. the spectrum but two very interesting projects it would be nice if you change the name excel to uh, bluebird it's, uh, yes. Axel is accelerating the electrification of flights. That's, uh, right. That's well, I mean, you know, Rolls Royce is associated with speed records and Bluebird. Yeah. Um, anyway, so so that's the roadmap. Um, we've spoken a bit about batteries. I'm looking at my notes. Perhaps you can tell us there was the Siemens partnership, and now you guys have managed to move on to yourself onto your own without Siemens. Tell us about that, if you could. Well, so we acquired the, uh, so there was a group in Siemens, the Siemens e-aircraft team, and Rolls-Royce acquired that group. Um, and now they are fully embedded within within the team. So there is no, uh, so I guess the, the Siemens, so we had a partnership with Siemens on the eFanX program, and now that team that we are in partnership with are part of Rolls-Royce. So it's, uh, the integration has gone well, and um, it, it basically means that we can, um, serve the whole portfolio of aircraft. So everything from general aviation to urban air mobility, VTOLs to helicopters to regional and um, and beyond. So yeah, it's you, you, uh, just, you just reminded me of one thing that I, I was I had forgotten about. Um, regionals. There was the talk about looking at doing something with Woodrow with their Dash Eight. Is that anything you can talk about? Well, so we're in partnership with Vidro, um, understanding how the hybrid electric technology can um, change their or, or enable their business model and also to, to decarbonize um, flight in, in Norway. Um, so it's not, not specifically to, um, to do any demonstrator or anything like that, but really just to understand how this could help. Um, sorry, let me my tongue back in my mouth um yeah so with with the project with video it's about understanding the business model around this technology so how can we work with an airline to enable them to understand what the benefit of the technology would be in the markets that they serve how can they fly with uh, you know very low or zero emissions aircraft and how does that work in their in their business model and what the technologies and and you know, who might the partners be um, in order to to enable that to happen. Fascinating. Brianna, this is very helpful and, and uh, very educational. Thank you so much for, uh, for speaking with me today. No problem. You're very welcome. Okay.